There are a ton of incredible games coming out this year and beyond, but I wanted to talk to you about the five that are getting me most excited to play, hopefully this year. Several of these games are already released and in people's hands, I just haven't had an opportunity to play them, while others should be released before the end of 2021, and I hope to play them before the end of 2021. Let's jump right into this. 1A, 1B, and 1C on my list are Blood Rage, Rising Sun, and Ankh by Eric Lang, what we're gonna call the Eric Lang Trilogy. I am playing this today, today is Monday. I am playing all three of these games with Doolin and a buddy from the Discord, Kyle, on Saturday. We're gonna play them, we're gonna discuss them on camera, we're gonna rank them, and I cannot wait. Blood Rage came out in 2015, Rising Sun in 2018, and Ankh in 2021. So this is a little bit of a cheat pick, but I have not played Rising Sun, I've obviously not played Ankh, and I've only played Blood Rage once, but didn't love it, and I, I really wanna try it again. Plus there's a bet, there's a wager on Blood Rage. There's a wager that it will shoot into Doolin's top 50 once he's played it. I hope I'm right, because if not, Patreon gets to decide some kind of punishment for me. But if I'm correct, Patreon gets to decide some kind of punishment for him. So I can't wait to play these games. So excited to try them out. These are troops on a map or area control games. It's kind of like a combat area control because it's not always the same. There's big miniatures, there's big abilities, and they all share some unique things that happen in them. Blood Rage is more about the card drafting and the Valhalla mechanic and the Loki mechanic and stuff like that. Meaning, because it's Viking themed, you sometimes want your people to die. In fact, I think that's that's kind of similar to Rising Sun and possibly even Ankh. He seems to have that kind of theme where losing and dying isn't necessarily a bad thing, which I think is great. And then in Rising Sun, you've got the, the same kind of thing with these wild uh, asymmetric abilities and factions. And then in Ankh, you've got this merging capability where the people in second and last place in a three player game or people in the bottom two are going to merge together to become one god sharing all the powers and abilities but only having I, I don't know why am I acting like I'm an expert in this I've never even played the game I believe you get like all the powers of these two gods but your actions are split so you get less actions like one action per you as a group because you're two people merged into one but you only get the one action instead of the two but you've got the two powers i think i i don't know i'll find out on saturday next on the list is a game that i don't have yet and i wish i did but it should be here extremely extremely soon i backed this game on kickstarter this is kabuto sumo designed by tony miller and published by boardgametables.com what a weird publisher name but you're never gonna forget their website address this is <laughs> How do you describe this game? This is actually very simple to describe. Why did I make that? Why did I exacerbate that? This is a coin pusher type game. If you've ever played one of those games where you take a coin or a thing and you push it and you, you everything kind of sprawls out because physics. That is what this game is. You're sumo wrestling beetles, essentially. And I love that some of the beetles are based off of real life wrestlers and things in the past. I think it's so cute, so adorable. You've heard me talk about Tony Miller before. I really like him as a designer in person. He made this game for his son. And I just think that's absolutely incredible. I cannot wait to try this. It's a dexterity game. You're taking a little, uh, piece, which are apparently beautifully produced wooden pieces, and just pushing it in a straight line and attempting to knock off your opponent. And there are also different asymmetric beetle powers and little chits and wooden pieces that make the things move in different ways. I wish I could showcase this game to you, but I can promise you that once we get it, we will talk about it on the channel. I would love to have a playthrough just to showcase this game. It's so unique, so interesting, and I hope, 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 hope it lives up to the hype. I think Draco is going to love pushing things around. Next on the list is Descent Legends of the Dark, published by Fantasy Flight Games and designed by Kara Kentel Dunk and Nathan Hajek. This is a app driven narrative RPG dungeon crawling game. And you've probably heard of it because the reviews are polarizing. I am so excited to try this game. There have been some complaints about the art. I love the art. Oh, I gotta, one second. I've already painted four of the heroes, the starting heroes, and I'm working on the remaining two for a grand total of six. I love the miniatures. 
I'm excited about the things that the app is gonna streamline, like line of sight and interacting and the market and upgrading and things like that. I really cannot wait to try this game. I get that it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I think it's gonna be mine. And I'm so looking forward to trying this out. Uh, if you have any experience with this, let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts, bad or good. I'm gonna go into it clear-minded, clear of head, and give it my own thought and my own feelings and come back to you and talk to you about this in another video. But I cannot wait to get this to the table, preferably soon with either Doolin or Danielle. Just really, really looking forward to trying this one out. Again, Descent, Legends of the Dark. And we'll leave this box out for this one because this too, number four on my list, is also published by Fantasy Flight Games. And this is Unfathomable, designed by Tony Fanchi and Corey Kneska. This is going to be Bald Baldur's Gate, Battlestar Galactica rethemed and reskinned into a Cthulhu type game, which I'm cool with. I, if you've watched one of my older videos talking about the top 10 games that I think I'd like, Battlestar Galactica was on there. Still have not had a chance to play it, but I probably won't at this point. I'll probably just jump straight to Unfathomable. I cannot wait to play this game. This is a deduction, hidden roll, heavier, longer game, negotiation. I cannot wait. That all sounds right up my alley. Really looking forward to trying it out. I like the theme. If I had any kind of connection to Battlestar Galactica, maybe I would want to go for that. But personally, for me, never seen the show. I have no real connection to it. And although I'm not big on Cthulhu, I do like that deep the monsters of the deep and the cosmic horror and the unknown and stuff like that so i'm into it and i'm really looking forward to, that one is not out yet but should be out i believe in september or possibly even at the end of this month do not break my miniatures draco i see you buddy and lastly on the list hopefully coming to us this year this is the one i'd be most scared about not coming because it is a kickstarter that is not on boats yet. And we know in this day and age, that is, that is a hurdle that they are gonna have to jump through and tackle. But this is Uprising, Curse of the Last Emperor. This is designed by Cornelius Crimin, Powell Mazur, and Dirk Summer, and published by Nemesis Games. Now, I have played this game once before. I couldn't even tell you when because time is a lie. But I have played this game before with Jesse and Sean on Quackalope. This was, of course, the prototype. I warned you about that. <laughs> I just want I'll, you to know. This is bad. So this will give people a feel of how you shouldn't play. Right. The game. Play smart. Yeah, we just talk went, about your turn. We went so balls deep early on that that really just messed up. Oh, I like it. You're going I like for it. it. Let's do it. This is a. 4X cooperative fantasy game with asymmetric powers and factions and enemies. And I cannot wait to lose so badly again. I am really looking forward to this one. I hope that we do better. We came in very confident in this game and we got smacked around. We got destroyed and I wanna play it again so badly. It's got these beautiful standees, which I can only assume are going to be even prettier in the final production. They're standees that I loved because not only are they colorful and vibrant, of course I would love miniatures to paint too, but they're also extremely functional, telling you like what dice they use or what ability on the bottom. It's so cool and I cannot wait. My experience with this game is one of the best prototypes I've ever had the opportunity to play. I loved it so much. Draco is biting me. I guess I'm talking too long, but these, these are great. If you're interested in other games that I like, check out one of these videos to the left and let me know what you think about my tastes.